Hi, I'm Nate Adams, and in part one of this video, uh, we walk through how there really is no viable path if we continue with uh, fossil fuels in our homes to get anywhere close to a 40% reduction in carbon creation by 2030. There just there is no prayer. Uh, so that one left you without hope. This video should leave you with hope and uh, show you what the path forward looks like. So I need to rehash for anybody who's coming in, uh, or if it's been a couple of days since you've watched this, running houses requires energy. That's pretty basic. So if we want to heat and cool our house, if we want to have lights and just have modern life, we need to have energy uh, for the house. We really have two choices of energy. So we can use fossil fuels, which requires burning something, or we can use renewable fuels, which do not require burning something. And when it comes to renewable fuels, the only way that we are good at creating renewable energy is electricity. So there's some other ways to get there, but they have some pretty severe drawbacks. So if we are going to uh, move to using renewable energy, we need to electrify everything. And again, hat tip to David Roberts for coining that term. So if we're going to electrify everything, we need to get rid of the gas meter. So we talked last time about how houses use energy, uh, and about 70% of the energy in most uh, American homes is fossil fuel. So that's for heating your water, and that's for heating your home. So we need to get rid of the gas meters or the propane tank or the fuel oil tank or whatever it might be. And before you say that this can't be done, these are the first four gas meters that we have removed in Cleveland, Ohio. Not exactly a warm climate, um, and all of these houses are pre-1920, so this can be done, we're doing it. So in the last video, we talked about first principles, which is the art of going to the end and working backwards to see what the, the path to a solution looks like. And the conclusion that you will come to by looking at different options is that the only way we're going to get large reductions in fossil fuel usage in our homes is with electrification. Uh, we do pretty advanced and fairly exotic energy efficiency projects. They're called home performance projects. Uh, getting 50% reduction in heating and cooling usage is heroic. It's really difficult to do. It's not something you get every time. You can't count on it. And the projects are going to be more exotic than you're typically going to see. So we're not going to get there through just energy efficiency. We need to get there by electrification. Now I'm going to go onto the geeky side for a second here, as if this wasn't geeky enough already, uh, but uh, I need to talk about site energy and source energy briefly to define them. So site energy is energy that you use at a building at your home. Source energy is the amount of energy that was required to create the energy that's used at your home. So if you're talking, say, a, a coal power plant, you're only getting maybe 30% of the energy in that coal being used in your house. And most of that is because combustion is not very efficient at all. Um, now when you talk about renewable energy, really the only losses that you have are line losses and transition uh, or transmission losses. So that is where, uh, say the wind turbine is sitting on a mountain 200 miles from your house. Uh, it has to go across that transmission line and then it gets dropped down in voltage to where uh, your house can use the power. And there's typically somewhere in the ballpark of 10% losses there, which seems big, but that's not 70% losses. So uh, in my mind, site energy is roughly equal to actual energy when you're talking renewable electricity. Uh, so that's what you want to keep in mind as we look at this next thing. So speaking of geeky, this is an energy model. So this comes out of a program that we use, and this is from a proposed project uh, and I wanted to show you how energy savings look. So this is looking at total site energy usage, which, like I said, with renewables is roughly equal to the actual energy. So package one here, this is uh, a home in Shaker Heights. It's about 3,000 square feet. Shaker Heights is a, uh, a really cool suburb of Cleveland where the homes were typically built between 1920 and 1940. They're these big brick, cool-looking houses with wonderful workmanship. I really like these houses, but they are 
uh, they're energy hogs, they're, and they're not easy to fix. So package one here is a really nice insulation package and air sealing package, but that's all it is. And you can see that it's a 24% reduction in energy use, uh, which doesn't get us anywhere close to that 40% we're looking for. Now package two is a little bit better air sealing, so it would be doing some more work in the house, but not drastically more. And then changing the water heater from a natural gas water heater to a heat pump water heater. Note that that number is above 40%. So we're getting there. Uh, and then package three is everything in package two, and then we add a heat pump. So uh, uh, we change this house from using a boiler to heat it to using a heat pump to heat it. Uh, a heat pump is an air conditioner that runs both ways. Uh, so you see the 78% energy reduction. There is energy being used because physics uh, but the energy that is being used to heat your house is captured from the cold air outside, which seems kind of crazy, but go take a look at uh, my video about how heat pumps work and what the residential options are, which I'll, I'll post a link for here, uh, and see how that works. But the key thing here is we're up to a 78% reduction in site energy, which is remarkable. And the 50 to 80% range that you see there is pretty typical when we're doing these energy models. And not only is it a 50 to 80% reduction in energy use, but if you are using renewable electricity, there's no carbon footprint at all. So at that point, if we remove the gas meter and we uh, shift over to electric heating, you know, we electrify everything, uh, uh, we are completely wiping out the carbon footprint of that house. So that's 100% reduction. So that leads us to the scenarios. Uh, so renewable scenario, we, we had talked last time about fossil fuel scenarios, and I do not see a uh, scenario that keeps homes using as much fossil fuels as they are today that has any likelihood at all. Basically, we're, we're talking impossible or you know impossible minus a little tiny bit, but it, it ain't gonna happen. I just don't see the path forward. Now, when we talk about renewable uh, scenarios, so this is electrification scenarios, uh, it, now we start to see where there's at least some hope. So renewable scenario one is that 40% of homes go all electric by 2030. Uh, I can see some odds for this, but that's going to be a really tough lift. So I wouldn't expect that to happen at all. Um, if we did a lot of policy changes and the politics became open to it, yes, maybe, but uh, don't plan on that. Uh, scenario two is that 100% of homes do partial electrification and or buy renewable electricity. So you saw in the package two of that house, it was about a 50% reduction in energy use if they switched to a uh, electric hot water heater, a heat pump water heater, and also, they did some air sealing and insulation in the house. So that's something that I could see happening, and particularly if they buy renewable electricity to power the house. So again, not great odds, but I can see a path forward on this. This should be renewable scenario three. Got to love it when you miss something in uh, proofreading. Uh, but uh, scenario three is 75% of homes do a partial electrification. So they may change an air conditioner to a heat pump. Uh, they may... Uh, change the water heater. Uh, so any uh, of the appliances that currently run on fossil fuels, at least one or two of them get switched and they buy renewable electricity. This looks like it's fairly likely to get to that 40% by 2030. Still not going to be easy. So I don't want to say this is easy at all, but I at least can see light at the end of the tunnel on this scenario. And with all the other scenarios, I just don't know. Uh, I originally went through this exercise when I was working with a group in Rochester, New York, that was trying to figure out how to hit this 40% goal uh, for the city of Rochester. And when I first ran the numbers and looked at what the odds of this are, I, I couldn't even see a path forward that had any likelihood. And it was very depressing. And it took a while for me to really chew it through and realize that electrify everything, it's, it's the only path. This, this is the only thing 
that exists. So if we want to get to 40% reduction in carbon production by 2030, the first principles path, the only path forward, is to electrify everything. Now, you may be wondering what that looks like. Uh, Green Tech Media just put this uh, article up yesterday. So this is Justin Guay. Uh, Justin, if I'm butchering your name, I'm sorry. Uh, he works with the Climate Work Foundation, uh, Climate Works, excuse me, and uh, used to be with Sierra Club. So he decided that he was going to electrify his home. And this is in California. It's in the San Francisco area. That is a climate that like, I don't even know why furnaces exist in California. They're dumb because uh, furnaces are automatically four or five times larger than they need to be to heat a house. It's heat pump territory. The heat pumps are just the ideal solution there. Um, and he still found it really difficult to switch his house over to that, which is kind of amazing. Uh, so go, please, read that article, see what it looks like. Uh, it shouldn't have been that hard, particularly in a climate that is good, in a state that is, uh, you know, very green, certainly greener than Ohio, where I live. So let's talk about what the seven steps look like. Uh, I'm going to link to the video uh, that I did, but we'll talk about the first two steps. The first step is to buy renewable electricity. So uh, there's always a way that you can do this. Many states, it's easy. Uh, if you're watching this and you figure out how to do it, please write a blog article and post it, share it so that people know how to do it. I'll link to uh, the article that I did for going on to renewable energy in Ohio. Now, in Ohio, it doesn't cost anything extra. It's within a half a cent a kilowatt hour, so plus or minus 5%. It's, it's the same. If you go buy renewable electricity, that wipes out 30 to 40% of your household energy use and the carbon production with one phone call. So if this takes half an hour or an hour. This is not a big part of your life. If you don't do this, really look at yourself in the mirror. I don't want to use guilt, but I'm using guilt. Uh, this is something that we all should be doing and we all should be advocating for. Uh, now, the beautiful thing about this is, yes, you can say that buying renewable electricity just basically by buying Rex renewable energy credits, that uh, it's kind of bunk and it's not really anything. Look, it's a market mechanism. Why do you think that we have healthier food on the shelves now than we did 10 or 15 years ago. We have organic food, we have non-GMO food, uh, you know, we have uh, a movement towards being vegan and vegetarian, which is another carbon thing. Uh, those things happen by voting with our wallets. So please vote with your wallet and buy renewable electricity right now. Um, so go figure out how to do that and then teach others how to do it in your state or your utility. Second thing is you want to do the easy stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of things in your house that are not connected to other things. Converting to a heat pump to heat and cool your house, that could be a big lift for your house. So don't just do that. Uh, that's a mistake. Uh, you're, you're likely to have a bad experience there. Uh, but there's lots of systems in your house that are not interconnected. So you can change your stove from gas to induction. Uh, you can change your water heater when it goes out from natural gas to a heat pump water heater or an electric water heater of your choice. Uh, there's lots of options there. So as systems start going in your house, switch over. Now the hardest one, I can't stress this enough, the only thing in our house where we have an emotional connection to natural gas is the stove. I like cooking on gas. My wife likes cooking on gas. We have induction now. Uh, it was about a three-year battle to get there, uh, and I really only got it because she wanted a bigger fridge, and to get a bigger fridge, we needed to get a new stove, too, for a bunch of reasons. Uh, but that was what finally tipped it. She really liked cooking on induction, and I don't burn stuff nearly as much anymore. Uh, but until you experience it, you don't understand that you can let it go. So we routinely have clients that come to us like, heck no, I'm not switching off gas, no way. Uh, can't do it, but if you're going to get rid of the gas meter, you've got to get rid of every single appliance uh, in the house that uses gas. So if you are watching this and thinking, oh, geez, I hate cooking on electric. That's not induction. Uh, go buy a hot plate. They're like 50 to 70 bucks for a good one. Go buy one. This is a new wave too. Uh, and try it out. So 
do the, the classic thing, don't knock it till you try it. So go try it, see what you think. We recently had a client who was dead set against getting off of gas for uh, cooking. And she bought one of these and she loved it so much. She said, uh, uh, look, I don't burn stuff as much anymore. It turns off automatically. I'm, I'm very happy with it. I can't imagine getting gas, cooking with gas ever again. So she's actually largely not using her gas stove anymore and cooking on this little hot plate. So go try it, see what you think. If you hate it, great, but at least that way you're making an educated decision, not an emotional decision. So those are the first two. I'll uh, let you watch the seven steps video so you can see that. But right now, go buy renewable electricity and go buy uh, an induction hot plate so that you can understand what it's like and then you can advocate for it, have people over, cook on the thing. Um, and so the key thing is when you look at possible scenarios and you step back and you look at it from a first principles uh, perspective. Let's go to the end, a 40% by 2030 reduction, and then you come back to what it looks like. I don't see a path with any likelihood that doesn't involve electrify everything. So please start on the path, take a look at the seven steps, and uh, if you like this video, because now you have hope where the last one left you uh, feeling a little dark, uh, if you like this video, please like it, comment, share it, that's how this sort of thing gets out there and starts happening. So please uh, get the message of Electrify Everything out there. I'm Nate Adams. Have a great day.